Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Congratulations on becoming a part of UIMONA class of 2022-2023. You ought to be proud of yourselves. Another stride in your life's journey. This afternoon, we aim to engage you in the process of course registration and also to sensitize you of some key areas that will help to guide you administratively through your student life. The topics for discussion today will be spoken of in more detail during the academic advising and orientation session. So ladies and gentlemen, please make every effort to be at the official academic advising and orientation sessions in August. I am Sandra March, moderator for this evening session. The team that you'll be hearing from are Executive Director of Mona School of Business and Management, Dr. David McBean, Maxine Letman Hall, Aisha Matthews, Angelique Curtis John, Sabrina Adams, and Carol Wedderburn White. So, ladies and gentlemen, in honor of our reggae girls, let us kickstart our activities with a hearty welcome from Centerfield, Dr. David McBean. Dr. McBean, over okay, to th you. Thank you very much, Sandra, for that stern welcome. And I'd like to extend my own warm welcome to our students. And you will be a special cohort because you're the first group that will be coming back face to face after the COVID pandemic. And so I want to say special congratulations for having made it through and for starting your UWI journey. Uh, so welcome to MSBM and welcome to UWI and you have made it to a top 1.5% university as ranked worldwide. So you're in one of the top 600 universities globally. So you are special and you have come to a world-class campus. Now, most of you will be coming straight from high school where you know, you're monitored and managed and you're coming to university where the emphasis will be on self-management. So you're now fully grown up and we know it will be a transition for a lot of you. And what we're doing here today is to make it easier. Now, UWI is run on a number of systems and platforms and that's how we communicate with you. So it may not mean much now, but just remember virtually anything you want to do with a course or a program, whether you want changes, you want overrides, you want to get into another course, another program, you have to go through what we call SAS, the Student Administration System. Your course and your coursework is done through another system called OURVLE, and you'll hear more about that, and of course our email system. And most importantly, you have to follow the guidelines in your handbook. And it's very important because if you send me a lot of emails or you send Ms. Marsh or any of the other academics or coordinators, you still have to go back and enter it on SAS. So it's very important that you're familiar with these systems. And I'd like to thank the Student Enrichment Committee in particular for this initiative where we're giving you a head start so that by the time you come around to official registration, you would have mastered this. And that will make your UWI journey so much easier. So again, you know, MSBM, we're all about high standards. We have some of the top uh, graduates or, or managers globally and regionally. So for example, in Jamaica, Don Webby, from, who heads up Grace Kennedy is an MSBM graduate. Audrey Togwell Henry, who heads up Scotiabank, she's also an MSBM graduate, and there are several more. So our job is to ensure that when you leave MSBM, you will likewise be a part of our high-performing graduates. So 
I'm very confident you'll do well. Um, once again, congratulations for doing this journey. We are back face to face this year, so that will give you the full UA experience. So please enjoy UWI, not just the academics, but the many social activities, clubs, sporting events that would have been missing for a lot of other students. So have fun while you work hard and welcome once again. Dr. McBean, thank you for that hearty welcome, which I'm sure will resonate with our students during and after their journey at MSBM UWI, the first cohort after the pandemic, after the online programs. Continuing the game, our players will take you through the UE student portal. However, there are three main rules of this game. Rule one, your question and answers will be taken after all presentations, except for the presentation by Aisha Matthews. Rule number two, questions on registration will be taken after the presentation. Rule number three, you may post your questions in the chat while the presentations are going on and they too will be addressed. I will now hand you over to player Maxine Letman Hall. It could Good evening, and I also want to add to the welcome on behalf of the Student Engagement Committee. Welcome to the Mona School of Business and Management. The Student Engagement Committee has a mandate to help you as your as student to, to, to have initiatives, to so have initiatives to help you as you try to be successful, as Dr. McLean said. And so we're here for you. For the school year, we'll be having a lot of seminars, example seminars on time management, study skills, et cetera. We'll be having also social events. You'll see all these events on our social media in your email. And we're encouraging you to support us because we are here to support you as you continue your journey. So welcome to the Mona School of Business and Management. And my task today is to introduce you to our UWI student portal. And as Dr. McBean said, these things, the portals, all the different links that we have at the University of the West Indies is to help you, to help you to manage yourself in this self-managed environment that we have. So to to get to engage our student portal, you'll have to go through our main webpage, and that's the UWI webpage. And the URL for the UWI webpage, with, um, which I'm going to ask Miss Lawrence to put in the chat so you can put it in your favorites, is www.mona.uwi.edu. And so when you click on that URL, it will take you to our main UWI page. And it's a page that we want you to always engage with, a page that we want you to go to. We have a lot of information on it. We have messages from the principal, chancellor, vice chancellor, different things happening in the Caribbean is there. You can also go on and engage with our different campus, that's St. Augustine and Cave Hill. So there's a lot of things that you can, information that you can get from this web page. So while you're on break now, on holiday, you can go through, browse, see stuff that we're having, different, different events that are happening, and you can participate. So today we'll be looking on our online system. So you'll see that at the top of our UWI page, and that's the system that you will engage with most of the time while you are on campus. So when you click on the online systems, we have two portals. We have portals. We have the students portal and the staff portal. And the student portal is the one that you will use. So the student portal have a diff diff number of page links and direct links. So they will have the student administration system and that system SAS 
you'll use a lot while you're on campus. So I'll take you, I'll introduce you to that page. Also our VLE, which is our course management system that you'll also use. We have the bursary online system that will link you to the bursary and you're supposed to get to know that system or online tuition payment. You don't have to go to bank, your parents, or you can pay online from that system. We have our online transcript requests. So if you leave here when you graduate, this is where you'll come back to, to, to request your transcript. And we have online application system. Then we have two important links that you will need to know, but the library will come and engage you during orientation and after orientation on the library virtual reference service and also you will link. We have our facilities management unit for persons who live on campus. So you will engage with that if you are a person who will be living on campus. And then our student e-time sheet system for students who work on campus. But as I said today, we will be looking at just two, the top two, student admin system and the an RVLE. So when you click on our student administration system, which is SAS, it will take you to this page. When you come to this page, you'll see enter secure area. That's where you will enter to do all the things that you have to do. There are also on this page, you also have a link, also have a link to our online payment, to admissions, which you had used to, add, to get admissions to the campus, and then some other information. And most importantly, if you forget how to register, there are videos on how to add course, drop course, and request override. So if you forget, we also have information to help you because we are here to make your journey as smooth as possible. So when you click on enter secure area, when you got your letters, you got a student ID. Please remember that, please know that. That's your ID that you will use while you're on campus and if you return as a postgrad student as long as you're a part of the university of the west indies mono that's the id you'll use so once you click on enter secure area it will ask you to enter your username which is your id number so you enter that id number and at the beginning before until you change that password it will be the password will be your date of birth in the format four digits year two month and two day. So you just enter that and then you can change that password. But at the beginning, that's the password you'll use. If you need help, if there is any information that you need, if you're having difficulties, just call MITS. The information is there on the page or you get in touch with MITS. And there are also a live support online, an efficient support for you. So you can go on and you can contact MITS once you have issues logging in. So ID number, password. So after you have entered the secure area, there are two portals on it. So there are two pay links, page links, and that's the personal information, and student services. For personal information, it gives you your address that you used when you applied to the program, phone number, email address. So that's information that you provided us with. So your personal information is there. It also is and on the personal information, you will get your UE email address, which I'll go through shortly. And also if you have a motor vehicle, and you want a motor vehicle sticker to enter through the main gate, that's the gate at the top when you enter university, then you can apply for the sticker there. And, and there's the next link is the student services. And that will speak about applying, admissions, registration, and all your academic records will be under that. So we're now going to look at personal information page. So under that link, we have view address, phone number, so you can view what is there. And if you have changed your information or if there's something incorrect there, that's where your mail will come or anything that we're gonna send you, then you can update it. There's an update address portion. 
And there's an email address portion. You can update your email. If you had an email, you don't like that email that you have or you have an email that you want to use that you're using now, then you can go in and update your email. And as I said before, you can apply for vehicle sticker. Here is where you'll vote in the Gilead elections at the end of your first year, if you want to vote. And there are some time when they said that there are some survey they want your student to fill out. This is where you'll come to do those. So as I said before, your address, if you're updating your address, you'll come here and it gives you all the information. It tells you how to update, how to insert, and then you submit and your address will be updated. The email now. So once you are online, once you are registered, it's only registered students that get an email address. So an email address is assigned to you when you apply but you are not given access to that email address until you are, you are a registered student. And we have reasons for that because your email address is linked to Microsoft 365 and we have to pay for it. And so only registered student get access to Microsoft 365. So once you click on the personal information, when you click, once you register, you will see your email address. To activate that email address, which is important because that's the email address that you'll use to communicate with your lecturers, communicate with admin, student services, all our faculties, other students, and that's the email address that we send emails to, information that you need. So you need to make sure you activate that email address. So going down to the email address. Sorry. So you make sure you activate that email address. So for personal information, we have here where you can apply for stick on. As I said before, once you click on it, it would give you all the information that you need to apply for a stick up. So the next thing that we have is student services. And when you click on student services, then you will see registration, student records. And also, as I said before, you'll see where you can pay. So everywhere you go, it, it prompts you to pay. You will have an automated student request system where you can request leave of absence, you can request withdrawal. So you can request things right there. You can apply for a transfer to another faculty. The, uh, there are other things here that is not pertaining to undergrad students. Example, graduate studies, thesis tracker, that's for our graduate students. Then we have our Office of Student Finance assistant application. So if you need help, you can come here and you can apply they will assess and then they will contact you. We have a matriculation service every year for new students. And so when you come here, you can accept that invitation to the matriculation service. The others, that's book graduation is for graduate students. The other one is for our, also our master's students. But the, most, the next important link is where you have make an application to get your ID cards. So all students on campus must have an ID. And so you will make an appointment here, sorry, to get your ID. And then we have the one at the bottom. So where you see select preferred examination site for face-to-face -face exam. That's when we used to have online exams and face-to-face -face exams. And the bottom one is where you'll get your schedule for your exam. So all your courses that you register for, you will get a schedule for when you have your examinations. So under the student records section, we have and before I move to student records, Ms. Matthews will speak on registration. That's why I'm not going through registration. Ms. Matthews is here. And after this presentation, she'll speak on registration. And at the end, we will have 
a student uh, counseling session for students. So Ms. Matthews will mention that, but we will have that counseling session after this session, you'll get a link and then we'll have academic counseling for you. So on the student records, we have view holes, your account summary. So in case you did not know if you pay your fees or if you have anything outstanding, please make sure you check the account summary to make sure that you don't have outstanding fees before your mid-semester and before your final exams. Sometimes students forget to pay or they pay a portion of the fees and they have some more outstanding and forget to pay it. So make sure you come here and check before any exam or midterm test to make sure you don't have any outstanding fees that will prevent you from sitting your exams. You can get your midterm grades from on the student records also and you can check your grades after exams. So that's your unofficial academic transcript. So after your first term exam or your end of year exam, you can check to make sure. There's also if you, you see request remark or go through in case you think that you did not get a grade that you deserve or you think so you can request a go through with your lecturer. And if you do a go through and you think you deserve more grades, you can also request a remark. So when you come here, it will give you information. You click on the link, it will give you information and you can apply. And also you can see your unofficial grades. So as I had mentioned before, this is a page when you click on hold that you will see if there's a hole on your record, so you see, and if there's no hole, then you're fine. But if there's a hole, then you'll have to contact the bursary to find out why there's a hole and clear that up before you're allowed in an exam. So make sure you check these things before exam and test. Also, we have here your fees. When you click on your accounts, then it will give you your fees. It will give you how much you pay to date. So it will give you an update on your accounts. It will tell you how much fees you have outstanding if you have a balance, so you can clear a balance. So you can't report to say, I did not know I have a balance because we have a system that is updated regularly that will show you if you have a balance. When you pay a fee, you can check to see if it was applied to your account. And then I had spoken to you about the automated student request system where you can go and request leave of absence, request withdrawal. So when you click on that page, you will see, you will get this link that says create your request only after updating your personal information. As I said before, if you change address, then you will click on select your request type. When you click on select your request type, it will take you to this page. It will give you that drop down, and you can choose either you want leave of absence if you or your late leave of absence if you want to leave at the end, close to the end of the semester, or if you were asked to withdraw and you want to request a waiver, and if you want to withdraw from the program because you want if you want to leave the program and come back after then you need to do these official documents so that we keep a record. So when you're coming back, it is smooth for you to come back. And as I was saying, for persons who need assistance, so if you need assistance to purchase books or you need grants or you need assistance to purchase meals, then you can apply through the system you know, they will assess it and then they will contact you. And that's it for, for SAS. So we have a lot, you'll get an email from campus to, that speaks about the English language proficiency test that students who did not meet the requirement will have to do. The email is out now, so please check. The email will be like this. So please check to make sure that you get the email. If you didn't get the email, I'm gonna ask Ms. Lawrence to put the website 
in the link and you will go online and you will now apply to do the, the test. It is necessary for you to do the test because some of your first year courses will need the results from the test. So please check to make sure. And these are our contact information for our undergrad office, our telephone numbers, our email address, and our WhatsApp number. So take this down so that you have it so you can contact us if you have any issues registering after registration opens on Monday or you have anything you want to clarify, you can send us an email or send us a WhatsApp. And also our social media information for Mona School of Business. So it's, it's department specific. So please join us, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, just join us and events that we're having is posted there. You can join us on events on Facebook. You'll see what is happening. And I know you, all our new students are social, love social media. So if you want information or want to know what is happening at Mona School of Business, please join our different handles. So thank you. And I now pass back on to Mrs. March. Thank you, Mrs. Letman Hall, for that very informative delivery on SAS. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard all about the wonderful tools. But guess what? If you have not accepted your offer online, you have no access to SAS. Remember to confirm your acceptance, please, or else you are going to be very frustrated trying to get on the system. We're going to now play Ashi Aisha Matthews will guide you through the registration process. Please remember rule number two, questions will be taken afterwards. Hand you over, Aisha. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mark. Okay, so welcome to the UWI Mona. My name is Aisha Matthews. I am a member of the Registry Information Systems Unit and I work very well with MSVM. So I'm very happy to be here to make this presentation to you. Um, so essentially all students entering UWI Mona must complete the registration process. And this simply means that in order for you to be enrolled in a course, you must electronically add this course to your profile. Now this year, UWI has upgraded its registration portal and so it looks a little bit different, which means if you have relationships, you know, a sister, brother, friend who has been at UE, who you know would be an individual resource for you, the system has changed for them as well. And so I'll be talking a little bit about what this new system means and how you use it to add a course to your profile, how you use it to drop a course from your profile that you're no longer interested in pursuing and how to request overrides for courses where you have not met some particular criteria. So um, in, over my presentation, we'll be going through the registration portal, the registration processes and requirements for all students, and then we will do an actual demonstration of adding, dropping, and requesting overrides for courses. So as I stated before, UWI Mona has upgraded the student registration module from version 8 to version 9. Additional functionality will continue to be rolled out to students. So this is just the first phase of the new system. You'll be able to do different, perform different activities in Banner 9 as we continue to roll out the features. Banner 9 registration will be the only interface available for this academic year's registration and in the future terms to come. 
So the registration processes and requirements have not changed for any student at UWM Mona campuses. This means that all deadlines ex still exist and must be adhered to. We continue to encourage students to register as early as possible to avoid late registration penalties. We continue to encourage students that all components of a course must be selected when you are registering for a course. In addition to that, whenever you are dropping a course from your record, you also need to select all components of that course. Students are also advised to select the current course section or stream for your campus. UWI Mona has multiple sites, including Western Jamaica campus. We also have TLI sites. We have a weekend campus. And so courses are scheduled for each site. Students who have been admitted to UWI Mona Kingston campus will have a different stream to register for. Um, in comparison to a student who has been admitted to the WJC or Western Jamaica campus program. Okay, so you must select the correct campus when registering. Override requests, which some students will become very familiar with once you have not met certain requirements for a course, are all processed by the faculty or departments. Please note, however, that once you have submitted an override request, approval is not guaranteed. The faculty is at liberty to deny or approve your request. Registration for a course is also registration for the examination of that course. All UWI Mona students are required to register online for courses so they may be successfully admitted to their examination. Examinations may be conducted online or face-to-face -face, and your registration for that particular course will be checked to allow you entry into the room, whether that's online or a physical room. So how do we get to actually registering for courses? There are a few steps that we encourage students to take before they log into the system and attempt to add a course to their record. And the first step, of course, is to obtain the necessary registration information, which all of you are doing right here um, in this session. So students should attend all orientation activities and online and find your online guidelines. There is information on the faculty um, pages, there's information on the SAS homepage that will act as guidelines for you whenever you are attempting to register for courses. We also encourage all students to attend academic counseling, which Ms. Mrs. Letman had pointed to earlier. Following this session, you will be receiving academic counseling, and so you would have fulfilled the requirement there. And then at that point, you would have been um you would have enough information about what courses you should be selecting and then you can proceed to go online and do that selection following the selection of courses students who have the who need to request overrides should continue to check their records to ensure that a decision was made on their request as I stated before, overrides are not guaranteed to be approved. And so the student must take responsibility to continue to check to ensure that a decision was made. Finally, students must ensure that their fees are cleared and paid so that they can obtain financial clearance. All of this information on your record is available to you on SAS and you will do a demonstration of where you can find out whether or not you have financial clearance online as well. So what's available in Banner 9? Well, once you log into the system, you'll be taken to a landing page with four links. Each link allows the student to perform different um, activities. The prepare for registration link 
gives the students an overview and of their curriculum and also indicates whether or not the student is eligible to select courses in a particular term. So um, once you have accepted your offer and you have no issues on your record, meaning you don't have any holes or anything, uh, you will notice that your registration status has three green ticks to indicate that you're eligible to register. You'll also see your registration date and time. This page also gives students a list of any override decisions on their record. So once you have requested an override, after you've completed the adding of a course, you can always use this prepare for registration page to see whether you have an override app which was approved or an override which was declined. There is a second link called Browse Classes. This link can be used by any student to view the current schedule on the system. Students can search for a course to see what the current timetable is for that course. However, students cannot register for this page. It is literally a list of all of the courses being offered in a particular term, um, but you cannot add anything from this screen. So if you have access to SAS today, which some of you might once you have accepted your offer and you have no outstanding issues with the university, you can log in, um, which means you know you entered your credentials as described by Ms. Letman earlier. You can actually come to this page, look at the classes, see what's online, make a note of what your timetable may or may not be. And then when the system opens for registration, once you have that registration date on time on your prepare for register page, you can then move to the add drop screen and add the courses to your record. The third link on the page is the view registration information link. And this takes you to a view of all of your registered courses. You can also send a copy of your schedule once you have registered to any email address. You can send it to yourself, to your parents, to um, your job. If you have a job that requires your timetable information, you can do that from this page. You can also print your registration information from this page. And finally, the register for classes link takes you to the search bar, the search area to search for a course, to add courses, and to also view your summary. And you are also able to view an actual timetable or schedule of your courses once the timetable information is available for that course. So when you are registering for classes in Banner 9, students actually have two options. You can search from a list of a particular course using whatever search criteria you enter, or if you have what is called the course reference number, which is a unique identifier for a stream of a course, you can actually enter these CRNs, add them to your summary and submit. And once you don't have any issues, you're not, um, you have met all criteria for the course, you can register successfully using that option. The last tab on this page is a schedule and option tab, which just allows you to once again view your registered courses. It gives you a list, gives you a breakdown of all of the course information. So you can see daytime, instructor room, um, any information about the class that you would want to review. So before I move into the actual system, there are a few points I want to note. <clears throat> On the search results page, the student, we may need to zoom in and out to view all the available information. 
Bananine gives the student a lot of information and the way that it is displayed on the page may require you, depending on the size of your monitor, to zoom in and out to be able to see everything that's there. Um, there is a single page view of the schedule of classes, the timetable grid, and the course registration or summary page. And I'll explain what that means when I get into the system. You can view registration information to confirm the courses that you are registered for. So your schedule and options tab and the view registration link will give you a list of all registered courses. So once you've successfully registered, that information will be available to you in those two places. <clears throat> you also have the ability to send a copy of your schedule to any email address as I indicated before. You can also register for your courses on your mobile devices. Current versions of the following browsers are supported for Banner 9, and these are Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Apple Safari, Apple products, Microsoft Edge. If you are currently using Internet Explorer, I'm going to ask you to please uh, download a browser that is supported because you may run into some issues if you're using um, a different browser. So, I'm going to stop share and then I'm going to open the registration link so you can see what it looks like to register for that course. So once a student navigates to the student administra administration system homepage, just as Mrs. Letman did earlier, you navigate to the Enter Secure area to log into the registration portal. I also want to point out that if at any time you are um, you have any additional questions or you just need a run through, there are registration videos on this homepage um, that gives an actual video tutorial of how to add a course, how to drop a course, and how to request an override. This information is always there. We could always come back to this page, listen to these videos, and proceed to add your courses to your record. So once you select the enter secure area link, it takes you to a login page. You will enter your student ID number and your student password. And then you will navigate to the student services option. Once you're in the student services menu, uh, let me just zoom in a little bit. I want you to be able to see what's happening. Once you are in the student services menu, the registration link is the first link on this, on this page. Once you enter the registration menu, which is where you have to perform all of your registration activities, the first link is the banner nine registration at drop link. Right below this link are quick guides, which are PDF documents, which again, just explain how to add courses and how to request overrides and give you a guide into Banner 9 registration. So there are multiple places um, to get this information online, okay? So to add a course, you click on the Banner 9 registration link and I want to point out to students here that it opens a second tab in your browser. You are able to navigate between both tabs in order to perform different functions. Banner will stay open in its own tab. So as stated before, the prepare for registration link will indicate to me whether or not I'm eligible to register in a specified semester. So I'm looking forward to coming to school September 5th. So I select 2022 semester one because you must register per semester. You don't register for the year. You select continue and it takes you to the registration status page. As indicated before, you can see your registration status here. I can see that uh, um, I'm permitted to register. There are no issues with my academic statu status. There are no holes on my record. Um, and 
I have what's called a time ticket, which simply tells me the time I'm able to add a course to my record. So once the system is open for normal, normal registration, which does open next week, Monday, July 25th at 10 a.m., that time, that start and end time will be reflected on the registration status page for all students. On this page, I can also see an, a brief overview of my curriculum. It tells me that I'm an undergraduate student at the Mona campus in the Faculty of Social Sciences, in the Social Sciences program. My degree is a BSc and my major is accounting. It also indicates that I am a Mona School of Business and Management student and that I was admitted this upcoming academic year. So with all of that, there is some additional information on this page regarding your override request. So if you have ever requested an override and a decision was made on that request, all of that information will be displayed here. I want to point out to students again that seeing this message is not an immediate, yes, I have been approved, because right here you will see where this specific override request for um, this particular course was declined, right? So what's important is actually the end of this message, which indicates whether or not the override was approved or declined. Now, to get back to registration, the view registration information, again, once you've registered for courses, this page will have that information here. And from this page, you can email your schedule to yourself or to addition or to anyone that you want to right here you just click on this box and enter the information and um that's it um you can expand or collapse these pages by using the arrow buttons so if there was information um populating this table you could expand it to see it if i wanted to see this page you could expand it as well Again, the Browse Classes is a replica of the Register for Classes link, with the exception that you cannot add a course to your record from Browse Classes. So currently, any student with access to SAS would be able to enter search criteria. So I'm an accounting student, I could select that accounting course. I search by the subject area of the course, all courses have eight digit course codes with the exception of law courses, which are seven digits because the subject area is LAW. Um, so once you have gotten your academic counseling and you know your list of courses, you would also know your course codes. So you can search by your course codes here. So if I want to search for ACCT 1005, for example, I indicate this information here. If I don't want to put the course code, I don't have to. I just need to indicate the subject area. I can also search by campus. So if I were a weekend school student or I were a Western Jamaica campus student, I could um, limit my results to only courses scheduled for that particular campus here. But I'm not, I'm a Mona student, so I'll use the Mona campus designation here. And I select search. If you want to add Additional filters to your search, you can use the advanced search option, which opens up a long list of other filters that you could put on the page. And select search. So once you have selected, once you have entered search criteria for any course or all courses, um, that information will be displayed in a list. When you go across the list, you get details for that particular stream of the course. So on the page right now is ACCT 1005, Financial Accounting. Um, I can see right away that this course has a lecture stream and tutorial streams. And what this means is that this specific course has 
multiple schedule types. So the course has a lecture component that I must attend and a tutorial component that I must also attend for this, this one course, right? And these may be scheduled on different days at different times. So in order for me to register for this course, as long as I am okay with the information being displayed here, select so sure the campus, my campus is indicated here as Mona. Um, I can see that there are 160 seats for this particular course, for this particular stream. Um, currently, what's on the system is that this course is scheduled for a Monday at 12. I can also see the instructor assigned to teach that particular lecture. You can see that different instructors or lecturers will teach different streams of the same course. And there is also a button here called view linked. Um, so once you select the view linked option, once you select the view linked option, what it does is it pairs that lecture stream that I had selected previously with all of the scheduled tutorials. Because as stated before, this course has two components, a lecture and a tutorial, and I must select one of each component, right? So I must select a lecture and I must select a tutorial. Um, apologies, I need a quick minute because something is happening on my end that I'm not able to control. So I'm going to ask you to give me one second to fix this. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Hello, I'm back. Sorry, I'm, I must apologize for that. I was having an issue um, on my end. So the I was searching for a previous course, but I am going to use another course just because there was an issue with that specific course. So on the screen, I have another course, and this is MGMT 1002 Communication Skills for Managers. This particular course has multiple lectures, but no tutorials, um, which is the difference between this and the previous course, right? Now, this Register for Classes page, page has three different um, parts. Essentially, there is the search result area, there is a schedule area, and a summary area. When I'm registering for my classes, once I have selected the approve or any lecture or tutorial stream that I want, and I indicate add, which is located at the end of the row, it updates my summary screen or my summary page with that information. Again, you can expand and coll collapse all of these pages as you need to. Now, once I've added course to my summary, the status will initially be pending. This course is not registered until the status reflects registered. I can submit a course one at a time, meaning know that I have selected this particular course once I hit the submit button, which is located at the right, the bottom right-hand corner. 
it will change the status of the course to registered. So I have successfully registered for MGMT 1002. Now, as a UE student, more sometimes you're more than likely in your first semester, you're doing multiple courses. So I am going to search for another course. And this course has multiple lectures and multiple tutorials, right? I also want to point out to students that there are multiple campuses scheduled for the same course. So again, as I indicated before, sometimes you may have to zoom in, zoom out, or expand the columns in order to see all of the information located there. Or if you don't want to do that, you can always click on the title of a course, and this will open a pop-up box that gives you all of the information for that particular stream of the course. So I selected the very first stream and it tells me the campus, the course information. I also see the day and time and room here. I can also see the instructor. I can see the number of the capacity for this particular stream. If students were registering, I would also see how many students have already selected the course. I can also see if a course has linked sections or other schedule types linked from this box as well. I can also see if a course is restricted in any way, meaning um, are there any additional requirements that I must fulfill in order to be registered for this particular course. Um, in this case, the restriction is a campus restriction and it says all students selecting this particular stream must be enrolled in one of the following campuses, Mona Weekend. And this just means if you're not a weekend campus student, you will not be able to register for this particular stream. I can also see if a course has prerequisite requirements, meaning that there is a previous course that I should have completed in order to meet the requirement for this particular course, right? If I've met the requirement in any way, then I can go ahead and register for the course. In some cases, there are courses that have prerequisites, um, but this course doesn't have that. Uh, defined. So to register for a course with multiple lectures and multiple tutorials, I simply need to select a stream that um, that is scheduled for a day and time that I'm interested in doing this class since it gives me an option. Um, in this case, I'm going to select the first stream, which occurs on a Friday at 8 a.m. as I'd like my Friday evening. I can also see the instructor and I see a view linked button. I can see the, the view linked button next to the add button. And again, what this does is it shows me all of the combinations of the, um, with the scheduled tutorials. So I can go through and see, okay, that class is a Friday at eight in the morning. I want my tutorial. I don't want it on the Friday at two. I'm available Tuesday at three. And so I'm able to build my timetable in this way. So I can select the TO4 and click add all. Once I do that, it places the course in my summary places the course in my summary, right? Okay, now if I'm adding additional courses and I know the CRNs for those courses, I can go ahead and plug the CRN codes in this box. So the CRN for an additional course is 15487. If there are multiple courses that I'm registering for, I can also do that here. And then I'll select add to summary. Again, it places all of the courses that I'm interested in registering for in my summary bar, and then I can submit all at once. 
So now I'm at the point where I have entered CRNs for two courses, but I didn't select the linked course, meaning these two courses have lectures and they have another component, another schedule type, which is more, which is a tutorial because it tells me in the error message that there is a missing link, right? So I could go back to find classes, search for the particular course, which in this case is ACCT. I've already selected a lecture and I want a tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and set up this tutorial. I don't need to use the view linked option because I already have a lecture right here on my summary. So I just select add. It adds the, like, the tutorial to my summary and I can change this to web registered. If I'm no longer interested in doing this particular course, let's say I, I added in error, right? Then I can leave it at remove so that when I submit, it removes it from my record. So now I have successfully registered for three courses in semester one. If at any time I have selected a course for which I have not met the requirement, I have the ability to request an override. And in my example, I'll be attempting to register for this marketing course. And I've gotten a prerequisite and test score error. A prerequisite and test score error is not a fatal error, meaning I can request an override for it. And in order for me to do so, I can go to the registration menu the main student registration menu. And I can select the term I'm registering for and use the request for course override link. So students aren't currently able to request overrides in, within the Banana interface. So you must perform this function in SAS, right? The course is listed there, the same course I had selected in Banana it's in red still. And I can indicate to my faculty representative the reason for needing this, this request. And I can submit my request. Once I have successfully submitted my request, it will be displayed here on the page for me. And I can view my pending override request by using the registration status and financial clearance link. Now, as I indicated previously, students, all students are required to have financial clearance for each semester. New students will have a financial clearance for semester one. Um, however, obviously all payment deadlines are still being enforced. So you must ensure that you are up to date with your payments um, within the boundaries of those deadlines. So there will not be a financial hold for new first-time students in semester one. So currently it's saying that I have financial clearance for semester one and I can see all of my registered courses here and I can also see my outstanding override request which is listed in red. Again, I want to reiterate that a request for a prerequisite is not guaranteed approval by the faculty. If it means that I must follow up with the faculty the student is at liberty to go ahead and do so. Once I have completed all of my registration activities, then I can log out from the Banana homepage. And there is a sign out button right here. Right. Everything looks good except that I'm still awaiting my override for this particular course. Once I have been granted an override request for it, once I've been approved, then I 
whenever I enter Banner 9, all of my courses will be in green. And I can use the schedule to also see my timetable. All registered courses have a little green tick in the left right hand corner of the box. You'll see principles of marketing listed here on Wednesday, but you'll notice that there isn't a green tick to indicate that I have successfully registered for this particular course. But all, cor all other courses are indicated on my schedule. And there endeth my demonstration. Uh, you can sign out from Banner 9, just simply click sign out. Leave the page. It will take you back to the registration menu and you can exit there. Um, I had multiple tabs open, so it's open. Um, right. So that's a demonstration of how to use the Banner 9 registration portal. I want to point students to the fact that the registry information systems unit is currently cur conducting workshop sessions with students, both new and returning students. The um, remaining days are on the screen. Our next session will be on Friday, July 22nd at 10 a.m. This information was shared with the student population. So hopefully you would have received that email. You can make note of the days and times here um, from Friday, July 22nd up to July 29th. Uh, additional dates will be added to this schedule and that will be communicated to students. Please note also that RIS will be opening a registration assistance center on the 15th of August in the assembly hall. There will be computers available for students to register for courses if they have not yet done so by that time. And there will be assistance to provide support in adding and dropping courses and requesting overrides where necessary. Support is available from the registry information systems unit. You can send any, uh, you can send emails to course.selection at uimona.edu.jm as it relates to the Banner 9 registration specific um, queries that you may have. So if you're having difficulties with adding a course, if something is looking strange to you, please use this email address, send it to us so that we can respond as best as possible. In addition to RIS and your MSVM faculty, um, there's also the MITS help desk. If there are any issues with you logging into SAS in the first place, you, your password isn't working for some strange reason and you need to reset your password, please contact MITS for information about how to do that. Again, I want to remind all students that online course registration will open to all students on Monday, July 25th at 10 a.m. All students are advised to register for both semester one and semester two. Please note again that you must accept your offer. Students cannot register with what's called a provisional offer, which isn't applicable to MSBM. And that is the end of my demonstration presentation if you have any questions for me please go ahead and um, let me know no questions um i'm looking in the chat i'm not sure if students can speak or should I look in the chat for the questions? Good evening again, students. This is your opportunity to ask Aisha Matthews any question pertaining to registration. We, this session is really concentrating on, concentrating on registration. Um, I, I am aware that some students 
are interested to find information on maybe boarding, et cetera. But those information, you can either um, speak to admission or you'll get all this information addressed at the orientation. But this evening, we want to make every effort to help you to understand the registration system. So over to you, Aisha, and please raise your hands for any questions that you'd like to be answered. Okay. Um, do you register for courses before paying the tuition fee? I'm looking in the chat, so I'm not sure. Is someone speaking? No? Okay. Um, so, do you register for courses before paying the tuition fee? You, as a new first time student, you can, you will have access to register for your courses on Monday. However, once the payment deadlines um, become enforced, then students may have, um, may need to clear balances, for example, to make changes to semester two and so on and so forth. That communication should have been sent to all students from the Office of the Campus Registrar. I know there was a, an official notice to students um, that was sent out. But for July 25th, you will have access. Once you accepted your offer, you won't have any, um, you won't have a financial hold as a new student. Can I register for three courses and one free elective for semester one as a part-time student? Um, please note that there is a difference between the credit limit for a full-time student and a part-time student, and that is dependent on your program and faculty. So I'll leave that question to your faculty representatives, but what is allowed, how many credits or courses um, could you give us in the more classes previous? Okay, uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming you're asking about the timetable. So the departments will schedule their courses based on however, however they determine the day and time for a class being offered and the student is able to view that schedule of classes, that offering of classes, and decide, okay, the course is being offered on a Monday at 10 a.m. This is a required course. I must register for this class on a Monday at 10 a.m. However, some courses will have multiple options, meaning there may be multiple lectures, not repeated lectures, but separate lectures um, offered at different times, and you are able to decide not on Monday, I want to do it on the Tuesday instead. So you do have that uh, leeway with some courses, not all courses are scheduled like that, which is why you have to ensure that you're checking the, sh the timetables for each course that you're interested in uh, enrolling in to make sure that you are creating, you know, a, a sustainable timetable for yourself. What site do we go on to register? So you use SAS, the Student Administration System, SAS. You could literally type UA SAS into Google and it will take you to the login page. How do you know which courses to pick? Well, after this session, MSVM will be conducting a academic counseling session and at that time you'll be able to get that information. That information is provided to you by your faculty. Year month day is the format for your SAS password. Yes, that is correct. School is face to face now. Will any classes be online? The department and faculties determine how their courses are being offered, but most courses will be face to face. Is weekend campus for part time students? So Weekend Campus is simply a separate campus that offers programs to students and their classes are usually scheduled on a Saturday and Sunday. You can have part-time students who are not Weekend Campus students 
uh, and you would be able to register for classes at any time that they are available. What happens if your request over if your override request is denied? If your override request is denied, it means that the person administrating the course is saying that you have not met some requirements and you would have to, you could probably follow up with the particular department, but it means that you are not registered for the course. Um, someone asked, someone said, I feel I had the wrong idea on what override meant. Could you go over it? Okay, so when you are registering for your courses, there will be, there may be scenarios where you are not successfully registered. You will get some registration error that prevents you from being successfully registered. And whatever that error is, it will be listed on the screen. There will be a notation to say what type of error it is. Um, thank you so much for pointing that out. I want to show you something. So in the registration page, in the, in the registration menu, there are some quick guides. And one of these quick guides tells you how to request the override. And there is another quick guide called registration add errors that gives you a list of all the registration ad errors that you could possibly get. And it also tells you whether or not you can request an override. So please become very familiar with this document so you will know if I get a link section error that immediately tells me that I must go and find the missing section of the course or the missing component of the course. So I cannot request an override for a link section. The system will not allow it, right? So you would have to complete that registration for that particular course and attempt again. If you get a prerequisite test score error, co-requisite error, student restriction error, meaning a level restriction, a degree restriction, a program restriction, those are all errors. The ones in green are all errors that you can request an override for that the faculty can make a decision on. I also want to point out that in particular for part-time students, and this is applicable to full-time students too, but if you, if your credit limit for a particular semester is 15, for example, which usually means you're doing, what is it? 15? No. Yeah, which usually means you're doing five courses. If you're interested in doing an additional course, you will get what's called a maximum courses, ex maximum hours exceeded. And you can request an override for this, but this override is given specifically by the dean's office, as far as I know. The faculty could correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and there's also closed section errors, which means that the course is full, but you're interested in completing. Again, in scenarios like this, this is at the discretion of the department or faculty representative who is administering that course. So they can deny you and mean it. When does registration end? Uh, regist normal registration, registration without penalty, usually ends in about the second week of September after classes have started. Anytime after that, you will be required to pay a registration penalty. But those official dates will be communicated to you by the Office of the Campus Registrar. Um... I am going to hand over to Mrs. March now. Um, please come to our workshops with your question. We have we'll be able to address some of these registration specific questions there as well. Um, if you need that additional support. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much, Aisha Matthews. I noticed. Most of the students were not caring about 
how to register. So class of 22, 23 is now ready for registration. Um, again, all other questions, we are asking you to hold them until the end of the last presentation. And we are going to have an academic advising, which will guide all the students in the breakaway rooms, which courses you are to register, how many courses you are to register for. So we are now going to go on to our players, Angelique, Curtis John, and Sabrina Adams, who will now take you through the OR VLE platform. This is where all the information for your classes will be uploaded. Angelique and Sabrina, please take the students through. Again, Aisha, thank you so much. That was very informative. And I know that the students got a lot from you. And remember, on the 22nd of the 7th, you have another session with Aisha. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So we just got a belly full of information. So I will now be giving you a bit more. So let's call this dessert before we wrap up. So we, I will, and Sabrina will be speaking to you on OUR VLE. So what OUR VLE is, it is pretty much as if your learning environment, which is what you will eventually come to know it as. So OUR VLE stands for OR Virtual Learning Environment. It has a number of tools, so it's where you will submit assignments, it's where you will do quizzes, well, in-class quizzes, because quizzes are separate from your mid-semester and your final exam. It is where you will get messages from your lecturer or notifications from your lecturers. It's where you will do forum posts. It's pretty much everything that you will do in your academic life outside of sitting your face-to-face -face exam. So, how do you access OUR VLE? From the main page that Mrs. Letman Hall had introduced you to. Let me just pull it up real quick. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is what the library looks like. So once you log on, so once you type in Google or VLE, you will mono it and you click on the first link, it will bring you to this page. Here, as you see, it has a lot of information. Can somebody confirm if they're here and um, Angelique, I think uh, could we are not seeing your presentation. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, my bad. Entire. Are we here now? Okay, great. Since you can now see it. So let me jump back here. Can you see my page? Yes. Great. Okay. So all you are really is, as I was saying, your virtual learning environment. It's pretty much where you do everything outside of sitting your actual physical pen and paper, final exams and mid semesters. So I was about to show you the landing page. Why did it say it? I wanted to click the link. Oh, 
I have to move some stuff around. Okay, so this is the landing page for OUR Valley. So once you type in OUR Valley Uimona on Google and click the first link, it brings you to this page. So as you can see, it has boxes with bits of information all over the page, right? So in your top right-hand corner, right here, you will see the latest news. So this is where you will see information regarding if there's something happening with registration, if there's something happening with the system, it will tell you how to access the platform. It will tell you everything you need to know from the registrar or from our end to you. Sorry, I have to keep moving things. All right, so here it has exam information. So it will tell you, give you little pointers when it comes around to exam time on what you need to do and what will happen should you encounter any issues while doing an exam. I don't necessarily think this may apply to you guys since you'll be going back face to face, but in any event, all right? This box here tells you how to reset your password and it gives you all the phone numbers, all the WhatsApp line, all the contact information that you will need for me. That is the Mona Information Technology Center. Sorry. <laughs> System that Miss Matthews had mentioned before. It is where you will go or who you will contact when you need to reset password for any of your systems. So SAS or you are VLE, your UE email. You contact MIT and only MIT through the approved platform to reset your password. All right, let's do a quick login. Okay. So once you log in, you'll pretty much see the same bit of information. So it gives you your exam information. It gives you your latest news. And then here where it says my courses will show you all the courses that you have successfully registered for. So in this area, you will be able to navigate your different, sorry, In this area, you'll be able to navigate different sections of your courses. So you have different course materials for different courses. So they're all stored right here. So let's say Ms. Matthews had mentioned MGMT 1002, Communication Skills for Managers. Once you log in and you're registered for that course, you will see it here. When you click on it, it will bring up all the course content that your lecturer intends you to have over the semester. What they'll be teaching for PowerPoints, external links, articles, blogs, whatever they need you to have access to, they will put it in this container and you will have access to it. There is also a section for messaging. Okay, there's also a section for messages that will pop up once you get a message from, well, it can be a classmate or it can be a lecturer. So you can actually use the platform as a messaging tool. Let's say someone is in your class, they didn't get to make class that day and you just need a bit of information. You can look to see some of anyone from your class, you can search for them and you can message them. You, even, you don't necessarily need their email address. It has a calendar here that will tell you what's coming up. So if you see a highlighted date on your calendar, you can just hover over it and it will tell you what's happening. So let's say your lecturer puts an assignment up. If you see the highlighted date and you over over it, it will tell you assignment due and it will tell you the course. And you can click it to get more details if the lecturer gives any other information on that. 
So if you do this drop down here, it will, it says my courses. So you can click it, it will give you a list of courses. You can customize your profile if you so desire. Come on. So you can add a photo of yourself. It will tell you the courses that you're registered for in here. So it'll give you a list of courses that you're presently registered for. First and last access. And here's the message icon, well, button. So if you click that, you can search for any of your classmates, any of your lecturers, and it will pull the information and you are able to send them a message and you are able to communicate via the platform. Right, that's pretty much come on. Here is your search bar. This will be your friend because there may be instances where you are successfully registered for a course, but you may not see it on your home page when you just log in. You are able to search for any course at all, once it's offered by the university. And it will pull the information for you. All you simply need to do is look for the semester. So it reads, let me just make sure. So as you see, it has your course code here. And this S1 stands for semester one. And your upcoming semester will be semester Sorry, your upcoming year will be 22-23. So that's what you'll see here. So you'll see S1 underscore 22-23. And then it will give you the name of the lecturer. If, well, sometimes it gives you the name of the lecturer here and a brief course description. So if you don't see it on your homepage, you can always search for it. You don't need to panic. Just search for it. And then you can pull the information from there. All right, so if you're experiencing any issue at all with the platform, let's say that missing course that you're not seeing on your main landing page when you want that you want to see it there, you can always contact where you are available to support and see how best they will be able to well, add that to your main page. You can also contact them if something happens with the platform, let's say you should be able to access it, but you're not able to access it, you can contact them for that purpose. Right, so here is a little widget, it gives you quick tips. So it will tell you little things, so little study tips, little words of encouragement, just small things just to help you get by. Okay. And then, Sabrina, do you have the student access to show them this assignment for support on? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Because I don't have that. All right. So you can continue from here, though. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, good evening, students. Now let us take a closer look at the RVLE interface. As Mrs. Curtis Johns explained earlier, this interface is your go-to for your lectures, online quizzes, assignments, submission, lecture communication, and also some university communication may come up here. 
With that said, let us look at some more aspects of the interface that you'll be using. The main one is how to upload or view an assignment given by your lecturer. Now, this is how an assignment posted by your lecturer will appear. The assignment may be typed out or a hyperlink to the assignment may be listed somewhere here on the screen. Then you'll see the submission status. You also need to pay attention to the due date and the time remaining for the submission, unless your lecturer has, a, has advised you otherwise. Now, in order to upload a document, so you view the assignment, next is to add a submission. In order to add a submission, you're going to click this Add Submission button, and a pop-up like this will appear. Now, the first section, which is online text, usually you don't use that part unless the lecturer advises you to type in here. For assignments, you're expected to upload your document in this drop box right here. You can drag and drop from your PC, or you can right click and add the file. Now, it's very important that you select Save Changes to successfully submit your assignment. Once you've submitted, if the time has not expired for the assignment, you can always delete and upload the document again. Now, Sorry. All right, this is an example from an actual course container as to what the quiz will look like. So this is the actual course container. A lot of you may sit this course. A lot of you will sit this course from MSPM. This is what the course container looks like. There's an introduction, you can find your course outline and a host of other information regarding to your, the, the, the specific course that we're mentioning. Now, to find the quiz, here's a practice quiz that was uploaded for the, for the previous students. We would click that link and this screen will appear. Now, um, I was supposed to go on the assignment. Okay, so once you have uploaded the assignment and click Save Changes, then your status, the status will change from, the status will change right here from no attempt to attempt submitted. So if you have uploaded and you don't see this has changed, it means that the assignment was not added to the system and you're now expected to go back, check your submission. You can click add again. And also I should point out that if the assignment was uploaded, a link will be here for you to click to see what you have uploaded. Now, the next aspect of Orvili that you'll be using is the quizzes. No, an online quiz is one of the main ways in which you'll be graded in your courses. However, not all online quizzes are graded. Some of them are created for study and practicing purposes. Nonetheless, there are certain guides you need to adhere to when you are doing quizzes. These include, while you have clicked click the button attempt quiz now, you are not allowed to view any other web pages or websites whilst performing the quiz. Do not view any other resources on or really while doing the quiz. This could disrupt your attempt and uh, hinder you from finishing. Now, when you've entered the quiz screen here, I'll just share from the main container as I was doing before. Now, you have a set of instructions. You're expected to read all your instructions carefully. Do not wait until the last minute to do the quiz. So the quiz open, 
this quiz was open on February 28th at 6.30. You're expected to start your quiz at 6.30. If the quiz closes at 10 a.m. the next morning, you're not expected to go into the quiz an hour before or exactly 45 minutes before, which is the allotted time for the quiz. That's not wise. It's best for you to go in and give yourself time to complete the quiz. Now, While you are in the quiz, this is a screen that is showing you what this is. This is a multiple choice quiz. So this is showing you what this the quiz would look like. On your left here is a quiz navigation. For online quizzes, the lecturer usually specifies whether or not they are sequencing the questions or they are allowing you to skip back and forth. Now, if the questions are sequenced, it means that once you've answered question one and two here from this page and you enter question three and four, you cannot view question one and two again. So you must read carefully and answer these questions accurately before going to the next page. The... Upon answering all your questions in the quiz, the system will present an overall status report. So this is what it looks like. It gives you a summary of your attempt. It shows you all the questions that you've answered here and the status. So if the answer was not saved, it would be best for you to go back and save it. And if you can't go back, then you need to report this issue particular to your lecture, um, that the answer was not saved, you could send it to our Bailey support, but during quizzes, it's best to report that question number to your lecturer. Now, once you've reviewed this report, this summary of your attempt here, you can see that you have some time left, or if you have no time left, um, it's time for you to submit all and finish. Ensure that the quiz is properly submitted and you see the summary page of your attempt before logging off. Now, once you've completed the quiz, you'll see a page similar to this one. Um, it will show you your questions that you've answered and it will show you the mark that you got for the questions, whether it's correct or incorrect. In some instances, the lecturer may not show you your grade or the answers that you've got, but this information will be available to you after the quiz has been reviewed. Now for this session, we're showing you the answers. You'll see the correct answer and the grade that you got and the marks, the time you've taken, everything is here to show you that you have successfully completed your quiz. Failure to adhere to these instructions may result in the system failing to recognize your responses and hence up to you obtain a grade zero. Now, the next aspect of Orville that I would like us to go through is the forums page. Now, on each course page, there's a forum which allows you to communicate with your peers and lecturer, even though you are not all logged on at the same time. Discussion forums will be used regularly in most of your courses. The forums are the, are the primary tool for having a discussion online, just like social media. You can comment on a post, then you'll go back and view it later. Somebody commented on your comment. It's the same thing that the forum will do here in RVLE. Now, in using the forum, it is very important that you respond frequently to the postings of your lecturer and fellow students. Your post must be of high standard and showing careful thought. You always click on post the forum after you've typed your response. Now, as you see here on the screen, this is an example of a forum that was posted by the lecturer sporting in Jamaica. And this is what, this is the topic that they would like to discuss. Now you click reply, you type a response and you post a forum. If you're looking and you see someone's comment, you want to add a comment or reply, you can simply reply directly under the student's comment or lecturer's comment. 
Now, with that said, we'd like to share some tips for using Orvili. Always ensure that your password is valid and working. Ensure that cookies are enabled on your browser. And for optimal use, it is best that you allow pop-ups for the Orvili site. For example, if there is an assignment posted in a PDF format or the course outline in a PDF format, when you click it, Orvili is going to bring a pop-up. You, if your pop-ups are disabled on your browser, then it means you won't be able to see the document. And then you'll think the system is defective, but really and truly your browser needs to be updated to allow pop-up windows from or really. When doing activities, especially quizzes, ensure that you read all instructions carefully. I can't stress that enough because this is where you'll end up into major issues trying to resolve them to get your score. And the next thing is you can adjust your email address in your personal profile. Now your lecturer will type memos, as Mrs. Curtis John explained before, um, messages will be there from your lecturer. Once a message is posted onto Orvelli, they should be automatically routed to the email address in your personal profile. Just ensure that you're either checking the email that is listed there regularly for updates, daily I would recommend, or you can edit that email address and add the one that you prefer, the one that you check regularly, and then you should be up to date with everything. As said before, Orvelli support for all your issues, queries during your online quiz, your exams, if there will be an online exam for your course, it will be there. Um, you can contact Orvelli support at uimona.edu.gm. MITS is our Mona Information Technology Services. They have a Facebook page, WhatsApp, phone number. There's a live chat online that you can reach out to them regarding or Orvelli issues and also SAS issues as was pointed out before. Now I want to thank you all for being so attentive. You're now ready to interact with your peers and your lecturers using the Orvelli interface. And welcome again to the University of the West Indies. We do hope that you find Orvelli to be educational, rewarding and enjoyable. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, such wonderful tools at your fingertips, ladies and gentlemen. All oh, this sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Please do not let this information make you feel intimidated or overwhelmed. This portal is for you to access at any time. So we encourage you to practice, practice, and enjoy your new tools, just like when you get in your new smartphone. So please practice, practice, access the SAS. It's yours, it's your portal. And Angelique and Sabrina, thank you so much. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, it is that moment you have been waiting for the question and answer sections on any area pertaining to the presentations. Questions in the chat, let me remind you again, which have not yet been responded to, will be brought to the fore. And one of the panelists will respond. Again, rule four, please raise your hands if you have any question. Please, after this reminder, we will be breaking out into different rooms and we will be guiding you as to how to register for your courses, which courses. Okay, question and answers, please.
I see a question which says that we should not be registering for courses until you are being advised. This is the session we are going to have right after this. Okay? You're going to go into breakout rooms and we're going to speak to each person doing your majors, what courses you are to do. If you are full-time, it's five courses. If it's part-time, three courses. Which courses? Okay? Thank you. Any questions, please? Or is it that all the presentations were very clear? I saw another question which says, okay. There's no questions in the chat for you. I see one. When is the deadline for tuition payment? How can someone change from part-time to full-time? Do we have to pay the commitment fee prior to getting access to SAS? So are you seeing those questions, Mrs. March? Sorry, I was on mute. Um, regarding the question, part-time to full-time or full-time to part-time. Was it part-time to full-time, Mrs. Letman? Yes, part-time to full-time. You can, but on, on, on the, depends on the basis. Because if you enter the program as a fifth form student and you're coming to the program, you definitely come on the part-time basis. And, student, and if you are part-time, you have to do the first year and depending on your GPA, on your performance, you can request to shift to full-time afterwards. So it depends on the case. So what you need to do is go on SAS and request um, for the change. Because why was it that you asked for part-time at the um in the first place? Okay. Um, the other question regarding the the question regarding the twenty thousand dollars. What I understand is that all students are expected to pay the twenty thousand dollars. It should not hamper you from registering for your courses, but you should pay your $20,000. I notice the, um, the breakaway rooms are, on, are in the chat room just now. Please take note and you click on that link. So once you get in the breakaway room, we can speak to each student and address the majors that you are doing. Any other questions, Mrs. Letman? I'm not able to see the questions. There's a question that says, good evening, is this meeting recorded for you to watch again? Dawn Morgan? Would you like to respond to that or is Brian there? Thank you, Mrs. March. Yes, good evening, everyone. This session is recorded and will be posted on the Mona School of Business and Management's YouTube page. The page is in the link. Um, the link for the YouTube channel is in the chat, I'm sorry. 
I will drop it there again several times for you to see it. But also, if you just go on YouTube and type Mona School of Business and Management, you'll be directed to the channel and are able to view tonight's session and other interesting information that we have posted there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think you are really interested to find out what are the courses you're supposed to be registering for. So this section, as it, we say, all good things must come to an end. So this section, we are going to end and we want to thank you so much for participating. Player Carol Wedderburn White, will now give the vote of thanks, after which, remember now, after which we are asking you to join specific breakaway rooms. In those areas, you will be advised of the courses you are to register for, semesters one, one and two. Once again, the Mona School of Business welcomes you all. And you will be with, and we will be with you through this journey. So we're gonna hand over to Carol Wedderburn White, who will do the thanks, the vote of thanks. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It is such a pleasure to see so many new students in this Zoom session. And it actually says to me that you guys mean business, that your education is important and that you are making every effort to ensure that you have a smooth transition into the, your classes in September, right? You have gotten a lot of information so far and I would love if you could use it wisely. Miss Aisha Matthews actually spoke about your being able to browse. You may not be able to register at this point in time, but to be able to browse through for your courses. And after tonight's academic advising session, you're, I would I'd encourage you to actually browse to find your, find your courses so that when next week Monday comes, which is July the 25th, you can actually go online and register. And we're gonna, I'm going to encourage you that you encourage you to register early so that you get the ideal classes in terms of the times, the ideal tutorials. I'm sure nobody wants to be, wants to do a class at 6 p.m. on a Friday evening. So I'm going to encourage you to register early and register for your ideal slots. No, I'm switching to the chat room, that one person. Okay, I'm going to continue. I'd like to thank members of the Student Enrichment Committee for conceptualizing this pre-orientation session and bringing it to fruition. I'd also like to thank our presenters, Mrs. Maxine Letman Hall, who shared on the student administration system, which is called SAS, as well as how to set up your, your UE email. Also, Ms. Aisha Matthews from the Registry Information Systems Unit that went through the registration process, and I believe she did an excellent job. Mrs. Angelique Curtis Johns and Mrs. Sabrina Adams, thank you for sharing on OOU or VLE. Um, lastly, not lastly, but thank you, Ms. Sandra March, for so ably leading us through the session. What I want to leave with you guys is that we are here for you. If you have any concerns, if you have any issues, don't hesitate to, to um, contact us. We have administrators at the Mona campus and also at the Western Jamaica campus. At the Western Jamaica campus, we have Mrs. Sabrina Adams, Mrs. Sandra March, who is a program officer, and Ms. Sharona Brown. At the Mona campus, we have Ms. Nordia Lawrence, Mr. Elijah Green, and Mrs. Angelique Curtis John, Johns. And these are excellent point persons. So please reach out to us. So again, I, um, I feel good to see the numbers. We actually had over 300 students at one point. So I feel good that you have actually joined the session and we do hope that you enjoy the rest of the evening. And please remember to jump into the sessions, the specific sessions based on, based on your, your subject area or your area, your area of interest. So have a good evening.
Thank you, Carol.